When current flows through a wire which is lying perpendicularly to a magnetic field, the wire will feel a force. The equation is force equals magnetic flux density times current times length, or F equals bill. This force is proportional to the magnetic flux density, current and length. By increasing these, you create a bigger force. If you were to reverse either the field or the current, the force will act in an opposite direction. When you reverse both at the same time, there will be no change in the force. You apply Fleming's left-hand rule when you want to find the direction of the magnetic force, the current and the field. The thumb is used to find the thrust or direction. The first finger is used to find the, mag the magnetic field strength and the second finger is used to find the current. You arrange your hand so that each of the fingers and thumb is perpendicular to each other. Remember that it's your left hand. When there is a moving charge, we can call it a current. Current moves in the direction of which the positive charge flows. So when there is a negative charge, current flows in the opposite direction. When you want to find the magnetic force, we can use the equation F equals B Q V, where B is the magnetic flux density, Q is the charge, and V is the velocity. Each of these components of the equation are perpendicular. If you increase any of these components, then the force will increase. Also, if you reverse any of the terms individually, then the force will be in the opposite direction. If the velocity of the charge is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, the induced force is also perpendicular, and the charged particle will be forced to move in a circular path. As it is now moving with circular motion, we can apply the equations to find the centripetal force. The centripetal force equals mass times velocity squared divided by the radius. Also, force equals the magnetic flux density times charge times the velocity. If we substitute these equations, we can calculate the radius. So, the radius equals the mass times the velocity divided by the magnetic flux density times the charge. By increasing velocity, we increase the radius. If we were to decrease the magnetic flux density, we also increase the radius. We can calculate the time period by using the equation time period equals 2 pi r over v. The time period is not dependent on the radius or the velocity. But we can substitute r from the equation r equals mv over bq. So it would become t equals 2 pi mv over vbq. But the velocity cancels out, so overall it's t equals 2 pi m over bq. The equation for force is force equals the magnetic flux density times the current times the length of the wire, or F equals bill. But as current equals charge over time, we can replace current for this, giving us force equals magnetic flux density times the charge times the length of the wire divided by the time. But velocity equals the length of the wire divided by the time. So we then substitute the length of the wire divided by the time for the velocity, giving us F equals BQV. But if the moving particle is an electron or proton, then Q becomes the elementary charge of an electron. So then we are left with F equals BEV, and this is also the same as F equals Bill.